I'm going to click my summary and report. And I can see, okay, here's my design, my weird rectangular tree. I can rotate this image for the homeowner and make it look all pretty. Uh, I can see the system data, the installed power uh, at 11.22 uh, kilowatts. I can see down here the amount of clipping I'm gonna incur. So 4.29% clipped in the summertime months because that's when I'm gonna get more of that West Face production. A total clipped annual energy is only 2.16%. Only 2.16%. That means in four years, that system is not going to clip at all, right? So four years. So I think a DC to AC ratio of 141% for this system actually may not be a bad idea. Uh, and then I can see down here, self-consumption is, you know, 5.45 megawatt hours. You know, I have net metering in Arizona, so great. Uh, I'm going to import. This is the amount of energy I'm going to purchase at a 12,000 kilowatt hour consumption. I'm going to import about half of that with this system size. And I can see all the, the system losses here. And if I want to change that, I can change the uh, system losses if I have, you know, a better idea of what, the, what it might look like. Okay. And then down here, we're going to see our electrical design and our bill of materials. And remember, you know, we changed two of those strings to P405. So that's why I see uh, 400s and 405s. Now, if that's, you know, if I'm worried about my installers, you know, putting the right optimizers on the right, <laughs> on the right modules, uh, I would consider maybe just making them all 405s. So if that's the case, you just select your inverter, select the string that you want to edit, and then say, hey, those are actually going to be 405s. Okay, and then we go back to summer and reports we should see all P405s. Boom, 34 P405s. So now we don't have to worry about it. We see one string of eight and two strings of 13. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go back to our designer, our homepage. Now let's say that was one design I did, live webinar demo, uh, but we wanna edit. We wanna do two proposals. You just click the duplicate button, duplicate. Cool, so now we have our duplicate. And we're going to call this live demo, uh, live webinar demo with batteries. Battery. Cool. So the site modeling should already be done. Fantastic. The PV module placement is already done, but I want to change my, my system to incorporate batteries. So if that's the case, all I have to do is click on the inverter and then click the edit button. And the edit button allows me to select new inverters. And you can see, as I see the drop down list for inverters, the ones that have batteries, <laughs> that little battery icon symbol next to the name supports batteries. So I want a 7600A and I want the LG Chem Resu 10H. And maybe I want two of those. I'm going to click done. All right. The tool is giving me an error and it's saying, oh, it's a too much DC power is connected for this inverter. So I have 141% DC to AC ratio. And on the storage inverter, the 7600A, the maximum DC to AC ratio is 135%. So I'm gonna have to remove some modules. So let's go back to our PV module placement. And we know that these modules, because of the shading, these modules are not ideal. So we're gonna delete maybe three of them. Uh, we'll go one more. We'll delete four of them. We'll go back to electrical design. All right, fantastic. My DC to AC ratio is 125% now. My you know, modules are already strung in a compliant fashion. You know, that's super easy. I can click summary and reports and I can see, okay, I'm gonna see less clipping because you know I don't have as much DC energy. I have less DC energy installed. But look at this. My self-consumption went up to 84% and my import drop down to 1.91 megawatts because I am, you know, still consuming more of the generation that I created because I'm storing it in a battery. Now, if you have net metering, you know, the last time we saw our import was at what, six megawatt hours, uh, you know, that if it's net metered, then great. I'm just buying back the kilowatt hours that I sold to the utility. And so you'd have to look at your export. Uh, so export right here is 5.98 megawatt hours. So this system is going to be way overproducing and I'm consuming, man, this is awesome. I love, I love looking at these graphs. I'm self-consuming 84% of that energy. And as we get down to our bill of material, we can see I have a 7600A now with 30 
P405s and two LG Chem Resu 10Hs. Um, and then I can see the, the solar panels that I picked. So these are Panasonic solar panels. But let's say, oh, I forgot to show you, uh, the string design. So this is a handy installer tool, and it's basically just an option that shows you how the strings are laid out. So we have, you know, string 1.1 has nine modules, string 1.2 has 13 modules, and string 1.3 has, you know, we could probably drop this to two strings. So let's go ahead and do that now that I'm thinking about it. So let's, to remove your stringing, let's just click uh, clear strings uh, because the 7600 should work on two strings. So let's go, let's, uh, oops, let's add our strings. All right. And I think I'm just gonna split it up per these roof surfaces. Fantastic. Ah, boo, we got to 16. <laughs> so the maximum string length for the storage inverter using these solar panels is gonna be 16 modules uh, because the maximum string wattage is 5250 and we're at 5280. Oh man, 30 watts, that 30 watts killed us. Uh, so let's undo this one, and we're going to actually maybe three maybe three strings is the best is the best solution. Okay, all right. So if we decided we change our modules for whatever reason, you know it's super easy to do. So I'm going to go back to the home view, and say, oh, your your distributor doesn't have any more Panasonic solar panels, and you're like, oh man, I need I need LGs or you know whatever it might be. Super easy to do. Just click on the uh, the page, on the site, go to PV module placement, select the modules that are going to be changing. So you're going to say, okay, these modules are now LGs, and they're 320s. And notice how the size automatically changes based on the new module selection. So you might have to, you know, remove some modules around so they fit in the space again. Same with these ones. Let's change those to some uh, LG, some 320s. Cool. So you might have to, like I said, you might have to move them around a, a, a little bit because the form factor changes. That's one of the things I really like about this tool is because I know it's scaled correctly. I don't have to worry about, you know, are these modules actually going to fit? And I gave myself that extra, like, you know, one inch just in case. LG Electronics, 320. That's that's funny. It's like, nope, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> okay. Boom. So now all of our modules are 320s, and we go back to the electrical design. All the stringing is going to be invalid because we changed our modules, right? So we're going to select the inverter. We're going to clear our strings again. And then we're just going to left click, select our string tool, left click and drag, and start stringing some solar panels. So the uh, optimizer that I've selected doesn't match the solar panels that we changed to. So let's clear that stringing out again. Let's make sure our solar our solar panels, excuse me, our optimizers. So the we had the 405 selected before. So now the tool is recommending that we use a 320, a 340, or a 370. Let's go ahead and use the 320. My DC to AC ratio is still 9.8, so I shouldn't need a second inverter. I'm surprised that it's trying to offer me a second inverter. Uh, generate, and let's just delete this guy. Trash. Yeah. All right. So let's string this string. It's still saying that I have the wrong optimizer selected. Oh, because I still have the 405 selected to it. All right. We'll change it. Fantastic. Okay. Now we're cooking with fire. All right. 14 modules on string one. Oh, and we can get 16 modules on string two. Look at that. So changing the uh, modules actually may have helped us a little bit uh, just so we could run two strings. So I see my summary and reports. And I can see, you know, 9.6 kilowatts peak. Uh, still 
83% self-consumption instead of 84%. So changing the modules didn't have that much impact. I mean, I went from a 330 to a 320. We can see all the modules. We can see the new optimizer count. So everything looks good. The tool is super easy to use, uh, export to monitoring. So one of the things here is like, this is how we put it on the monitoring portal and how the installer is gonna take over and do the site mapping. Uh, so I could click export and now I have a site live on the on the monitoring portal. I can also click the print button. And the print button just does a, a printed report that I could hand over to the homeowner and say, okay, this is what the project is gonna produce. And this is, you know, the bill of materials. And this is the example of what we're gonna do. For additional information, and access to more in-depth tutorials, go to SolarEdge.com, select Login and eLearning to get access to the library of SolarEdge learning materials.